Hollywood, the real bees proud, taking on Tommy Ayers. It's scheduled for 12. Will also be on display. We still have another fight. This one is light heavyweight. And let's go to a real heavyweight, Ed Derriott, for the introduction of the fighters. Bruce Bell. Bruce Bell. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is scheduled for eight rounds and it's in the light heavyweight division. The referee is Tony Perez. And now fans, the principals. First in the blue corner, wearing the red trunks with the white trim. He weighed in at an even 179 pounds. This pugilist has 16 wins, one loss, one draw with 15 knockouts. He is ranked number nine by the International Boxing Federation of the World. A native of Trujillo Alto, Puerto Rico. And now residing in Miami, Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome aboard Freddy Delgado. Delgado. And his opponent in the red corner wearing the white trunks with the black trim. He tipped in at an even 174 pounds. Now this gentleman has 10 wins, 8 losses, 1 draw, with 1 knockout from Lorraine, Ohio. Boxing fans, here is Melvin Quick Ricks. Ricks. Harvey Delgado, you already got the instructions on the way, alright? Give me a good clean fight and I will not bother me one of you. Two seasons from so we're getting set for this eight round light heavyweight bout. Freddie Delgado against Melvin Ricks. Ricks has got the shoes, that's for sure. <laughs> I'll tell you so. Delgado was four pounds over the, the, uh, the weight limit at the weigh-in today. So they sent him out to run, so he ran down to the... To the he went out to the deli and he ate. <laughs> <laughs> well, he weighed in at 179 and Rick's at 174. They were contracted for 175. You know, as you go up in weight, the differential, I think, is less significant. It, it, absolutely. Four pounds of this weight means nothing. So, we've seen welterweights tonight. Seen some featherweights. Also seen some middleweights. Now we're on to the light heavies. Hope you're enjoying tonight's fight card from the Coconut Ballroom in Atlantic City. Bruce Beck and Joe Fariello bringing you the action just off the boardwalk. Rick's trying to stare down his opponent. Delgado ranked number nine by the IBF. Well, Delgado had already fought for the WBA light heavyweight title. He fought Michael Mora, but he wasn't too successful. He got knocked out in the first round. I'll tell you, that's, Michael Mora is a heck of a fighter. <laughs> that, I was going to say, that's no big disgrace because Mora can really punch. doesn't matter. It's WBO instead of uh, one of the other titles because Mora, real soon, is going to fight one of the champions right, in the other three alphabet suits. I think they're working on trying to unify that that, that light heavyweight title, and, and they've got some some very good attractions. And in, in right, Jeff Rick. Harding, I don't think he can fight too much, but boy, he sure draws a lot of people in Australia. And Prince and Charles Jordan. Williams looked impressive in his win over Frankie Swindell, <laughs> making him look like just an opponent. And you know Swindell's tough. There's no doubt about that. That's a pretty good fighter, that Prince Charles Williams. And, and then Virgil Hill. Virgil Hill is another outstanding fighter. And then you've got Michael Mora. They could almost run what they used to run years ago, called a four-man class. Let A fight B and B fight C and, and, and go from there. Let right, the two winners right. fight. Great. It's a good on. unification er, a spot. Rick's getting inside that time. All right, hold it, hold it, hold it. Rick's showing a little bit of a strange style. <laughs> to say he, he bends all the way down and his knee almost touched the canvas. I'll tell you one thing, when he, throw, when he does throw punches, he wins it. These two do not seem enamored with the other. Again, Rick's doing some leaning.
Round number two, scheduled for eight light heavyweights. Freddie Delgado, and the red with the white trim. Melvin Rex, white trunks, black trim. And the black shoes with the white tassel. Delgado doing a lot of staring, but not much throwing of punches. It looks like Pancho Villa without a horse with that mustache <laughs> and everything. Rich went charging him with his yeah. head there like a linebacker. Okay, break. An easy way to butt heads. In Atlantic City, if an unintentional butt occurs and less than one half of the scheduled number of rounds have been completed, the bout shall be declared a draw. And if under the same circumstances, half or more of the scheduled number of rounds have been completed, the majority score of the scorecards will determine the winner. Boy, this guy, Ricks, is impossible to fight. He leans on you, he gets underneath you, he gives you his shoulders, his elbows. He's just a very awkward guy. Having a nice body flow that time. Every once in a while, he throws something to make you know he's around. And then he's back down that knee again, and that should be ruled a slip. No, it was a slip. Okay. All right. You can't throw punches from your knees, though, Joe. <laughs> you can't generate any power. <laughs> I've never seen anybody affected from the knees. He landed a fair right hand that time. Oh, gee, he tried to butt him that time. There's a warning. Yeah, get a warning. Good pickup by Tony Perez. <laughs> this one is a real wrestling match in there. Yeah, I was going to say that. It looks like Ricks is uh, applying for membership in the WWF. Nice couple blows, though. Good combination land by Delgado. I got Something flew into the ring. And no, it was the mouthpiece. Came out. Yeah, came out because he was in trouble. Yep, Ricks gets it back. I think he's going to find a home for that excuse. Oh, there he goes. A jab right hand and then a charge with the head. Perez has got his work cut out for him here. Yeah, this is going to be one tough fight to referee if it goes any distance. Delgado landing coming off the ropes. It was a nice move by Delgado. And I'll tell you something, he's doing some nice work around the body. He's getting Rick's attention with those body punches. Good uppercut. Landed off the back of the ropes by Delgado. Okay, Rick. Rick's <laughs> almost picked him up. <laughs> oh, those were two nice punches by Rick. And then he goes back to <laughs> Submaridia with his head. <laughs> Well, this was an entertaining round. We'll be back. It's a round three, scheduled for eight. Slugfest. Not a lot of punches, a lot of pushing and shoving. But do you think when Delgado comes in there, he should be looking to for an uppercut? I'll tell you, this race is so awkward. The best thing to do is hit him on top of the head. <laughs> I hit it with the stool or something. It, it's really hard to have a game plan, you're saying. Yeah, that's you know. what I'm saying. It's just uh, this guy does all kinds of crazy things. He throws a right hand and he can look at his legs going all kinds of which ways. <laughs> this is a tough one to call as Rick comes off the ropes again. Oh, he got hurt. Oh, Rick's got hurt with a left hook. Rick is wild in there. Delgado now beginning to land to the stomach, to the head. Okay, Rick! Some of his best blows <laughs> by Delgado to the body, and then on the break, Ricks hit him. Tony better be careful because he's going to wind up getting clocked in this fight. These punches are coming from all kinds of angles. Ricks digging the head into the body. You know, to, 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 try and, to try and be analytical with this fight, Delgado should, when, he, when Ricks charges, just step back a little bit and get to the side because he's got an easy target by stepping to the side with Ricks. I think Ricks is slowly losing interest in the fight. Yeah, Delgado is definitely starting to take over. Well, I don't think it's so much Delgado taking over as much as he's serious. Wow, he hit Ricks him back with two right hands just as we said that. And then he leans in and buries him against the corner. Yep. I think strategy, I think we ought to throw that yeah, talk forget out about the window it. Yeah, this forget, one. Forget about it, you're absolutely right. To see who can land better on a break. <laughs> well, who, who gets to the cup quicker than the other guy? 
Ricks landed a fairly he decent did. shot to the yeah, body he there. Did. He landed a good shot. Now it looks like Delgado's losing a little interest. Under a minute in the third round. Delgado practically picking Ricks up. Now, if Delgado would step to the side, oh, Rich would, right. would fall on us because he's putting all his weight on top of Delgado. <laughs> Rick's landing an uppercut. It's kind of a hook. It's hard to determine who's the stronger of the two. Well, they're both pushing, they're both leaning, and they're just not giving. If either guy would move to the side, the other one would fall down. Here's an uppercut landed by Ricks. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Break it up. And the third round is complete. This front to the corner of Delgado. All right. Come on, you're all right, Freddy. Boy. <laughs> Swallow some water. Wipe off your jail, all right? Don't don't look to knock him out around the head. He's got a body too, all right? Heck of a change for Al Cerdo going from Buddy McGirt to Freddie Delgado. But that's what makes Al such a genuine boxing guy because he can make that transition and he's just as serious. I don't know about all that, Bruce. <laughs> not quite, but I mean he's still working and trying to get his fighter equipped to fight. You gotta like that. I'll buy that. I'll throw out the drama. <laughs> <laughs> this is the fourth round. Rick's landed his best blow in the third round, about three seconds left. Oh, Delgado nailed it. That was a first. The first time he defined it through a left jab. And surprisingly, it was he one of the stronger punches. He landed it. <laughs> Perhaps uh, Cerdo gave him the advice <laughs> to throw a, a unique punch, a okay, strange great, punch, great. a jab. <laughs> Delgado doing a nice job this round. Now Rick. Now Rick's coming back. A lot of body blows employed there by Delgado. Now this one's a wild one. I'll tell you, he should just spin off those ropes. If he only spins off those ropes, Ricks will just go flying because Ricks is leaning on Delgado. And if he removes his body from the lean, what will happen is Ricks will just go flying forward. And get to the side on him. If he gets to the side instead of going up the middle like that, he'll have an easy target. Although well, he's landing good punches right here, good uppercuts. And landing consistently yeah. to the body and to the head. Good uppercuts. And he's getting underneath Ricks now, which is what he should have done before. Ricks pops a right. This is becoming a really grueling fight. Both guys are taking a lot of good shots. A big right hand landed right. by Ricks. And Ricks got wobbled by one of those uppercuts. His legs went out from under. Now there, he turned to the side. Delgado. Alphys, as it come out, it's come out just underneath the fighters. Yeah, they're stepping on it. They're stepping on it. <laughs> allowing him to continue. Well, part of that rule is if the, referee, if the referee thinks anybody has a clear-cut advantage, then they don't stop the fight to put the mouthpiece in. I think Tony's going to stop it now. Right. Very, very good job the way he handled that mouthpiece rule. The rule states, Bruce, that if one fighter is having an advantage and the other fighter spits out the mouthpiece, then they don't stop the fight and replace it. Okay, break, break. So therefore, you can't get somebody who's throwing it out when he's in deep trouble. It's a judgment call, though. The and referee it's has to see that. judgment it's call. Very important. Oh, good uppercut inside by Delgado. Another one. He's found a home for those uppercuts. Oh, nice around. combination, Delgado. He's yep. wailing away at Ricks. And now there he goes to the side in trouble. Ricks with an uppercut. Out of desperation, and now he's all over. He's probably got him. Wild ending to this fourth round. Well, as much as we thought earlier, McGirt and 
Hawks have paid over textbook. This fight, throw the uh, skills and strategies out the window. But it's still entertaining. It's a good fight because it's a fight between good two guys that can't fight too much and they're both trying hard. So it's, it's, it, this is a real good fight. This is what the fans really want. Here's the ending floor in here in the fourth. Good left hook by Rich. And, and Delgado, you, prior to this, threw some real good right uppercuts, but Rick to his, Rich, to his credit, came firing right back. This is an awful tough fight to score. There's a look at the corner of Melvin Ricks, 10, 8, and 1 out of Lorraine, Ohio. I was talking to Michael McQuatcher at the weigh-in, and he told me Rich lost eight fights, but he felt he only really lost about three of them because he's always fighting in other people's hometowns. And he's always in fights like this, and he always loses close decisions. And I can see that. He's a, he's a competitive fighter, and he's the kind of guy that fights just hard enough to lose sometimes. Well, this one, Delgado is from San Juan, so this one is going to be up in the air. Yeah, they're, 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 he's going to get an honest count in New York. I mean, in New Jersey. I forgot where it was. New York Mets Bon Air, of course. Big uppercut by Rick. And Rick's back with a left. Delgado has almost uh, enjoyed fighting off the ropes. That's where he ends up now. He just leans off and fights. He's he, not even trying to get out of there. Yeah, but he's done a lot of effective work, a lot of effective work off those ropes. Now, nice there's, spin. There's that spin move I was talking about he should use constantly with Rich because Rich is, Rich is laying on him constantly. And if he keeps spinning, he'll get punching work. Inside of two minutes in the fifth round. This one's scheduled for eight as these light heavyweights continue to bang. Delgado in the red. Ricks in the white. Good body punches by Delgado. Boy, this is a grueling fight, Bruce. It really is. These guys are giving everything they got in there. Momentum shifts change in a moment. Absolutely. It just goes from one guy to the other. That's why I said it's going to be a hard fight to score. Well, Delgado should be making that spin move when he's laying on the ropes. You see the way Ricks is putting putting all his weight on him and trying to push and push and push and push. All he has to do is spin off those ropes. Now a break by Tony Perez. Well, these guys are going to sleep good today. A lot of arm pushing. There's a little uppercut by Delgado. That's been his best punch. And the chops to the body. They're tired. There's a little bit of a pause. And now Rex breaks off the pause. Yeah, he's winning those away. Fights. That could have been a low blow. That was a low blow. Hold it. This time it warrants a break. There's battle fatigue on the sides on both sides right now. Due for a headbutt if they keep those heads right on each it's, other. It's amazing that there hasn't been a there hasn't been a cut caused by a headbutt in this fight. The way these guys are banging their heads side to side on the inside. Ricks with a cut on his cheek. Ricks landing a good combination. Rick's well in the way, but Delgado says, hey, no problem, not no mocks. Again, Rick's lost his mouth. Respect Joe Fariello, Coconut Ballroom, Atlantic City, Murph Griffin Resorts, Casino Hotel, and Joe, if you're considering this fight for style, you might give the guys an F, but if you talk about effort, I think you got to give both guys an A. Yeah, it's an entertaining fight, it's a street fight, it's a brawl. Uh, very, very little technique, but a lot of punches being thrown, and it's a grueling fight. Does either fighter look like they might go at any point in this fight? You know something, at times it looks like both of them are going to go, <laughs> but then they just come back and they, they suck it up and they keep fighting. Sixth round scheduled for eight. Light heavyweight bout. Freddy Delgado in the red and Melvin Ricks in the white. There's a jab, second jab that I remember. <laughs> Delgado's thrown them both. He's becoming a boxer. There's another left hook on a, on a break. Boy, those breaks are almost dangerous. They're more dangerous for Tony than they are for the two fighters. 
I got, if I'm refereeing this fight, I got to think twice about jumping in there. Delgado not going to the body the way he was in rounds four and five. And just as you say, <laughs> he throws three body parts. And he goes to the and down goes Ricks on the right hand following the combination. That is all. So the question I asked you about who would go down, and then it's Delgado who lands the blows. And Ricks hits the canvas. He hit him a solid right hand. Delgado sends Ricks to the canvas in the sixth. And the doctors are in the ring making sure that he doesn't try and get up, that he doesn't move. They're trying to keep him as immobile as possible. Immediately they were in the ring. Yeah. Yeah, both in New Jersey and New York are very, very good conditions. The safety of the fighter is the most important thing. Here's a good left hook and a big right. Oh, well, that's, that's a big shot. perfect one-two combination yeah. for a fight yeah. that didn't have any style yeah. or textbook look to it. Rick started moving a little bit this round, and he gave, he gave Delgado a lot of room, and he reached him with a long left hook and stung him and then followed it with a right hand. It's going to come up here. You're going to see a long looping hook. Boom. And then the right hand follows it. Bang. Both good shots. Both good punches. Out of nowhere. They've got him up on a stool now, and the doctor's talking to him, which, That's is, good. A, which is a good sign. Yes, yeah. it is. Well, this one was entertaining. There's a lot of the blood flowing from Rick's face. The doctor's having a conversation with him right now, which is a very, very good sign. A lot of punches thrown in that fight, and a lot of hugs as well. I'll tell you, the last two punches that ended that fight were tremendous. They really were. It was, a, it was as nice a combination as we've seen all yeah, night. It was. Let's go up to the ring to Ed Derriott for the official announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, the time of this bout, one minute and 34 seconds of the sixth round, and the winner by a knockout, Freddy Delgado. Delgado! And a nice round of applause for Melvin Quick Rex. Let's hear it. On behalf well, the fans enjoyed it because they're up and cheering for the end of this bout. It was entertaining. And the winner is Delgado. We'll come back to the Coconut Ballroom in just a moment.